Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co., and this is News and Week in Review, where we're going to go through a variety of news pieces, the games I played, the Board Game Geek hotness, all the videos of the past week, that and more, links and timestamps to everything down below. Hey, other Alex here, I forgot to mention that we have giveaway winners this week. Uh, we did a Gen Con haul giveaway, uh, I want to say Friday of last week or whatever it was, but we had a whole bunch of people commenting on the video to potentially win Radlands or Paper App Dungeon. And to that end, we have Sarah127TS is the winner of Radlands. Sarah127TS is the winner of Radlands. I've already commented on your reply. Make sure you go ahead and send me an email at alex at boardgameco.com. No other form of anything should be uh, the communication for winning or anything along those lines, but alex at boardgameco.com. And then the winner of Paper App Dungeon is I am the one you know best. Just like that. I am the one you know best. Uh, again, I've already replied to your comment, so make sure you go ahead and reply to uh, alex at boardgameco.com to go ahead and, uh, you know, just get to go through the details of getting Radlands for Sarah127TS and Paper App Dungeon for I am the one you know best. Thanks so much. Stay safe out there with all the comments. And YouTube's been better at the whole scamming situation. It's been a while since I've seen a large amount of uh, giveaway scammers. But nonetheless, just, just be safe. Be safe out there. And with that, let's go back to your regularly scheduled Week in Review. We're going to go ahead and start off as news, as we typically do. Starting off with over on GameFound, we have the second episode of the uh, Peoples Behind the Meeples. Uh, disclaimer, by the way, I am CMO of GameFound. This is a podcast I do over on GameFound that we just started. We are on the second episode. We had one with uh, we had one with uh, Andrew Navarro from Orthborn Rangers. We have one now with uh, Mar Marco Picota from Raybox Games. I am a little confused why we have two of them on there. We have like two. We have two for Andrew Navarro too. I guess one's might be a feed. I'm not entirely sure why it is the way it is. Either way, I uh, went ahead and did an interview with Marco Picota from Raybox Games. If you want to go ahead and check out this series, uh, this, right now it's going to be monthly, but we'll see if it becomes more frequent. Uh, from there, we have over here, we have House of the Dragon. We have a House of the Dragon game announced. Uh, Dark Dealings is a new card game with bluffing, negotiation, and hidden agendas. And unfortunately, no picture in this particular article over here, but a new House of the Dragon game from, I believe, the team at Funko Games. Uh, we have over here, we have uh, Gen Con. Gen Con is expanding. Uh, Gen Con 2024 was increasing incredibly, incredibly busy, uh, sold out for the first time in who knows how long, and uh, they, they did break ground in 2023. They broke ground on new territories, new areas, and they hope to be done by 2026, mid-2026. So next year, Gen Con will be just as packed with no extra room, but the year after that, we might find ourselves with some extra space for some new people. We'll see how it plays out. We also have over here Board Game Arena. Board Game Arena surpassed 10 million user account milestones over here. It has a, some huge metrics over here. Board Game Arena, which uh, was founded in France way back when, I think 2010, became popular during the pandemic and all that. Uh, this one, uh, they, they were purchased by Asmodee, I want to say in 2021, if I'm not mistaken, at which point they loaded a bunch of Asmodee games. And since then, it's been a great opportunity to try games that you might want to buy, to play games you already know and love, and sometimes to just play games that you don't otherwise want to buy. Some games do play better online, and it's a great way to play those games. But Asmodee over here, they announced that they crossed 10 million users accounts. They have 900 games to play on the platform with around 5 million hours played each month. Go board gaming. Go board gaming. Like seriously, that's a nice milestone over there. It's nothing compared to video games, but we are making progress slowly but surely, and these 10 million user accounts certainly make a difference. Uh, we have over here the op. This is something I just saw. I got an email from the op on this, and so I figured I'll go ahead and talk about it uh, briefly. But basically, the Gnome Hollow Deluxe Upgrade Kit, if you are a fan of Gnome Hollow, we've covered it on the channel already, but if you want the Deluxe Upgrade Kit, that's something you can go ahead and buy from the op on the op website, or possibly other areas too. Honestly, it's a, it's a popular enough game that it would make sense that it's in a variety of places. We have over here an Evidel buying ga buying a guide on IGN. This is a little interesting. I wasn't sure to share this or not because honestly, I don't think it's a great buying guide. It kind of comes across as a link to a bunch of Evidel things. So like, if you want to support IGN, click on the links and buy Evidel. That is kind of the way it came across because as much as this is a link to like all the things Evidel, so if you wanted like a quick, uh, you know, here's all stuff Evidel from Evidel the base game to the collector's box to the expansions, my little Evidel, all these things and more. They have a bunch of stuff to the the the, the standalone Far Shore. They basically everything over here. Do they have Evidel complete? Complete collection twice. They have it twice. No, they have collectors, not complete. Uh, but either way, they have a whole lot of evidence here. They don't really do much as far as an actual buying guide, which is why I was like, I was happy to see this. Like, hey, spread the love of Evidel. It's now ranked 35 on Board Game Geek, so I was happy to see this on IGN. I did think it was a poor buying guide because it's like, Evidel, it's a popular game. Here's all the things you can buy in it. That's kind of what this buying guide felt like. So on the one hand, yay. On the other hand, 
do better, IGN. Do better. Like, so many people will be happy to write an actual guide. Like, hey, get the base game if you want this. Get the expansion box if you want this. Get Far Shore if you want one that's very standalone and self-contained and very solid. Get the original Evidel if you want to expand the system. Get the Evidel Complete Collection if you've tried it, know you liked it, and are willing to compete the complete that much for it. Get My Little Evidel if you're really obsessed with the Evidel system, but otherwise there's other great kids games and honestly has enough Evidel. And then Evidel Duo is coming up. I didn't even see any mention of that. I may have missed it, but I didn't see a mention of Evidel Duo, which will be launching in crowdfunding, I believe, later this year. Uh, we have over here, we have on Asmodee, another Asmodee news over here. Asmodee and the LEGO Group announced a partnership to create a bunch of LEGO board games. One of these was already on a demo over here. Is that, I think that's, who is this over here? Uh, what do we have over here? We have a LEGO, LEGO from uh, Asmodee over here. They had, at Gen Con, they had a starting whatever they, they they had the starting first game in the series was on display but they announced basically that they're going to have a bunch of games coming uh, from the asmodee and the lego group putting out games together and then we have over here we have the new hobbit board game announced uh, the hobbit motion picture trilogy hunt for the arkenstone a middle earth adventure game okay just hold up for a second i'm going to repeat that title again to you because i don't think i realized the first time how long that was the Hobbit Motion Picture, the Hobbit Motion Picture Trilogy, no, the Hobbit Motion Picture Trilogy, Hunt for the Arkenstone, Hunt for the Arkenstone, a Middle Earth Adventure game. That's a 14 word title. That is not okay. That is unnecessary. The Hobbit Motion Picture, hey guys, uh, you want to play a game tonight? Yeah, absolutely. What do you want to play? Well, I figure we can either play, you know, Root, or we could play the Hobbit Motion Picture Trilogy, Hunt for the Arkenstone, a Middle Earth Adventure game. Which one do you guys want to play? I, I think I agree with you. I think we're going to play the Hobbit Motion Picture Trilogy Hunt for the Arkenstone, a Middle Earth Adventure game. I also was thinking just the other day that I wanted to play the Hobbit Motion Picture Trilogy Hunt for the Arkenstone, a, motion, a, a Middle Earth Adventure game. Uh, that's, that really flows off the tongue there. But anyways, uh, and, uh, you have a Hobbit, a Hobbit game. A new Hobbit game is announced. If you want to go ahead and check that out uh, for a new Hobbit games coming to you uh, from Games Workshop. This is, that's the thing about it. I got so hot, caught up in the title, I forgot. This is from Games Workshop, which is already interesting enough. The name leaves a lot to be desired, and that's what we have for there. And that's what we have for our news of the week. Not a ton of news, but I guess a decent amount to go over. And then we're going to go ahead and go through the BG hotness over here. We have a lot in the BG hotness, a lot of things that showed up over here. From Winds of Numisera, this is uh, ending shortly, which is probably why it's here, again, that last final push. We have Dungeon Twister, Dungeon Twister 20th Anniversary Edition, again, over at GameFound. We have Civilution, that we've been getting more information uh, in front of its Essen 2024 release. Uh, we had uh, Undaunted, which has just been landing in people's doors. I just got Undaunted, very much looking forward to playing it. I broke it out, I started the rulebook, I'm on page one. That's the first page you need to do, uh, but I'm ready to play Undaunted 2200. There's also a solo mode, I might try that as well, but I'm excited for that. Spectacular has been getting a lot of buzz in post Gen Con halls. I've already played it. It's actually one of the games I'm going to talk about today as far as the games I hope to table this weekend because I want to play it again. I liked it. I liked it. We have uh, we have some more over there, more of that. We have Unsettled. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they have the, the, the portal, the, 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 is it called the portal? The Wormhole. The Wormhole. The Unsettled Wormhole. Uh, just got those expansions there as well, by the way. We have Gnome Hollow. Lots of post Gen Con buzz. We have Turner Nug, which just launched their crowdfunding campaign. So Turner Nug has a reprint campaign over on Kickstarter. Uh, and then we have, what else do we have? We have uh, Mandalorian, Intent to Kill, Slay the Spire, Minos, Minos Dawn of the Bronze Age. Uh, I definitely hope I helped promote that one because I'm very excited for that one from Stan Kodowski and Board and Dice. Very, very excited for it. Uh, you never know if a game will actually deliver. You don't know if a game will be great or not, but I am definitely very excited for uh, Minos. I did a video this past week of, of um, 15 upcoming games from Gen Con that I'm very excited about, and Minos took my number one spot because it has the mechanism from Rurik, Dawn of Kiev, which I absolutely love and I'm excited to see used in other games. And then lastly, we have over here, we have uh, Comic Hunters. Comic Hunters is an interesting one. Lots of post-gen con buzz, but mixed in that. Lots of talk about how it's sold out, it's hard to get. Uh, but I've seen a lot of mixed com commentary, both from people who are like, is this the game it was cracked up to be? Is this what everyone's been talking about? Because I do think Comic Hunters is good, but I think you have to temper your expectations. It has to be, to me, Comic Hunters is a better version of Splendor. That's the kind of category it's falling in. It's not a be-all, greatest game ever, whatever it is. But then also there's been a lot of uh, commentary about the, the quality of the components, which unfortunately I've seen a lot of negative press on that one which is really gonna take a little spot out of its uh initial release which is it sucks it sucks for you know spin master arcane wonders everyone involved the original press publisher uh because that's not and it sucks with people buying it too it sucks with people buying it as well uh because that's just not fun uh, bad quality components are not the greatest but that's what we have for the bg hotness over here which means it's time to go ahead and talk about the week in review starting off with the games i played uh this past week i played a few things i've been diving into a bunch of uh uh, titles that I need to demo because WSBG, the World Series of Board Gaming, is coming up and I'm prepping for that. So I've been diving back into some games of Lost Winds of Arnark and Castle of Burgundy. I have not been diving into uh, Ticket to Ride because, frankly, even though I do plan on competing in Ticket to Ride, that one's kind of my, like, whatever, I'll play Ticket to Ride. I don't, I don't, honestly, I've said this before, 
in WSBG, I, I want to play the games, but I kind of hope I make it to the end of a full race. Like, I win all the Castle Burgundies, which I don't think is going to happen, but I kind of hope I do, or just lose after the first game. Like, I don't need to spend the whole day playing Castle Burgundy. I don't need... Bo I love Castle Burgundy, though. That is that is the upside. And Lost Winds of Arnak as well. Both those are game systems I love. Both those are game systems I expect to be firmly trounced in uh, in those games. And Ticket to Ride, well, we're just going to do the best we can, buy as many tickets as I can, and hopefully have a good time. So I've been playing those. Lost in Zoranak and Castle Burgundy. Also played some Terraforming Mars this past week, uh, diving into that again. Both on BGA, I think I talked about it last week, but also in person. I got the new stuff from the uh, from the, the second edition, um, not the second edition, from the reprint campaign, from Prelude, not reprint campaign, from Prelude 2. I have the new map, so I played on the large map that has all the extra nodes and whatnot. So I enjoyed a game of Terraforming Mars there. And then lastly, also played, um, uh, what was the other game I wanted to talk about? I played, oh, Four Northwood. I played Four Northwood again, which is always delightful. I always enjoy playing Four Northwood, and it's just such a great game. Such a great, great game. In any case, moving on from there into the uh, weekend review. Starting off with this past Saturday, I did a review for Monikers. I really enjoy Monikers. I think it's an excellent game. I, I, I think it's one that you should definitely check out and try if you like charades or party games in general. Monikers is one of several games that have that kind of mechanic, but I do think Monikers is one of the best ones. Uh, for me, that for me. Uh, then later on Saturday, we had a, play, a solo playthrough of Wild Gardens. I dove into it solo. I plan on playing it multiplayer too, but I just have to happen to get it off the ground solo. You can check out that playthrough if you want to see that on the on the channel, I guess. Uh, on Monday, Monday, Sunday, 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 we had a top ten games I love after playing a ton. This is basically uh, my most played games, but with some exceptions in it. Specifically focusing on the nature of the fact that there are a lot of games that I get a lot of hours in, a lot of sessions in, and they can be very enjoyable despite playing a lot of time in those in those rules, which is not all. It's not always true. Sometimes you play a game enough and you can get a little burnt out on it. These are games that I have not in any way gotten burnt out on. My most played games that I still love. On Monday, Monday we had two back or not to back. Going through a variety of crowdfunding campaigns. We missed it last week. We had a late pledge video last week. We had a two back or not to back this week. Although a small week. It's a, Right now it's currently a little bit of a small week. So we're going to get another wave. Crowdfunding tends to come these like little, you know, what is it, uh, dips and lulls, lulls and they got hills and valleys. Whatever the term is. Boom and bust. Lots of crafting campaigns will show up at different points. You'll have like three major campaigns, and then you'll have like a little lull where you get the occasional sprinkling of mid range campaigns. On Tuesday, Tuesday we had a, ca a review for Tier Nanog. Again, I mentioned already, this is a reprint campaign over on Kickstarter. I just reviewed the base game. No no new content, anything, just covering the base game because I had a chance to play it a few times, and I overall fairly enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five. Uh, later on Tuesday, we had a review for Captain Obvious from Lucky Duck Games, a party game that I was not expecting to like nearly as much as I actually did. I like it a lot. I uh, gave that another 4 out of 5. It's not the best of the best, but it is pretty solid, pretty up there for me. And then lastly on Tuesday, we had a review for Far Away that I did together with Meg. Uh, Far Away is an excellent one. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5, and Meg gave it a 5 out of 5. So another another board game code 5 out of 5. Uh, if you want to check out Far Away, it is incredibly addicting, very, very fun, and I keep saying yes to playing it again and again and again, despite myself. On Tuesday, that was Tuesday. On Wednesday, Wednesday we had the top 10, top 15 games from Gen Con to be excited about. This is a video just going over the, the games I saw at Gen Con that will be coming up in one shape or another, and just talking about those games. And if you want to check that out, you can check that out. There were a lot of good games, including Minos, which I mentioned already, from Stan Kodansky, but a lot of other games as well. On Thursday... Thursday we had a, what's it called, a Primal Gameplay, diving into a campaign series of Primal. If you want, by the way, over on over on Patreon, we're actually also diving into the uh, prologue as well. So this is going to be an interesting series. There's going to be some content on the main channel and some content over on Patreon and Ko-Fi if you want to support the channel. Oh, by the way, speaking of which, uh, Ko-Fi is generally better. So if you want to support the channel and have more of those dollars go my way, Ko-Fi usually gives more dollars to the creator. But you can check that out, uh, Patreon or Ko-Fi, uh, the prologue for Primal. But the, uh, the game one, session one, will be on the main channel. Uh, and we'll be going through some more of it. I don't know if we'll be finishing the campaign, but we'll be diving into more of it as well. Uh, that was Primal on... On Thursday, later on Thursday we had a uh, later on Thursday we had a weekly live going over which I, I missed the past like three weeks. It's been it's been tough getting consistent on the live shows again. I, I kind of stopped doing it for a bit and uh, it's been hard getting back into the swing of things. But I need to do so. But either way, uh, Thursday we had the weekly live and then lastly on Thursday we had a Terraforming Mars unboxing going over the new content from Terraforming Mars, which I mentioned already. I unboxed it and then that night already played uh, the first game with Prelude Two. I hope to dive into these solo expansions soon so I could possibly give a review on the new Autonoma from Terraforming Mars on Friday. Friday we had a month in review, just going over the um, 
well, month in review, exactly what it sounds like. We do a monthly review series every single month, and just going over those videos if you want to check out, um, well, the game, my favorite favorite games of the month, my favorite experiences, favorite crowdfunding, favorite videos I watch from other channels, all of that and more in the month in review. And then later on Friday, we had another random question show. This is a series I do roughly once a month now where I just take a variety of questions, some from me, some from you, put them all together into a little uh, Google form and have you answer those questions so we can then go over it in the next month's video and talk about your responses and reactions. On Saturday, that brings us today. Today, we're going to have a few things going up we're going to have a review for risk 2210 going up on the channel this is an older title that renegade has brought back one of my favorite games back in the day before i got into board games i used to play risk 2210 a lot and so i wanted to re-examine the game and see where i stand on it uh, you can check out that later today as well as a review for bounty hunters from uh asmodee i guess i think it's asmodee it's fantasy flight it's someone in that umbrella of groups or whatnot but uh bounty hunters uh, you can check out the new star wars game for designed by uh frederick henry if i'm not mistaken uh, as far as next week next week we're gonna have a few things on sunday we'll have a video talking about the nature of convention halls this is something that shows up a lot both on my channel and facebook groups and other channels just talking about convention halls in general and then we're also going to have directly inspired by the brothers murph so full credit to them i'm doing a gen con 2023 look back at the 51 games I came back from Gen Con last year and how those games have fared over the past two years to see, uh, is it worth it? Like, uh, what's the deal with these halls? When people come out with all these games, are you really missing out on anything? Are you not? Should you get stuff? Like, what's the deal with Gen Con halls or halls in general? Just doing a Gen Con 2023 look back video. Those are both videos going up later this week. As far as the games on the couch, we have a few over here. We have Citizens of the Spark, which I've played twice now at Gen Con already. Hope to be playing this tonight if things go well. We have Spectacular, which I've played once and really enjoyed. And, uh, Hope to be playing it tonight, if things go well. And then we have Kingsburg, which I played the original version several times, skipped the second edition, and I'm back for the third edition, so I've technically played this before. I hope to be playing it tonight, if things go well. And then lastly, we have Undaunted Callisto over here, which, as I mentioned, I am on the first page of the rulebook. I am very excited to play this one. I don't know why. Like, Undaunted as a system is a system I've liked, but, like, the space theme seems so much cooler. I love it. I can't wait to dive into this one. I am excited. The components look great. The map looks great. This map looks great. And I just need to read the rule book and then see if I like it more competitively or if I like it more solo. I will not be hoping to play this tonight because I need to read the rules first. This one is probably going to be played in a few days. But I hope to be playing it this week. We'll see if I... This is a week I actually might get all four of my games. If I if things go well, I might get actually all four of these played. I would say the biggest question mark is this one. But also, those are three games I want to play tonight. Maybe I won't get to all three. So uh, time will tell and we'll find out more about this as the weeks go on. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you appreciate this video. And as always, I hope you have a good one.